It started with my grandfather, Frank Brancato. Um, I didn't, I knew him only as my grandfather. I didn't know him as a mob boss. Um, although when he passed away in 1973, I was 17 years old and just starting to learn who he actually was as far as his career goes. As my grandfather, you know, I had love and respect for him. Uh, when we saw him, you know, he was just grandpa. You know, he always treated us friendly, just like anybody, anyone else's grandfather. Uh, he just had a different life. And if you look at it, and you look at it realistically, during the 20s, 30s, the Prohibition era, people did whatever they had to do to take care of their family, to get food. Um, you know, he had five children, you know, a wife to take care of, so uh, he was an immigrant from Sicily, came over in 1914, you know, at the age of 17 years old, and that was the job he found, you know, when he finally came to Cleveland around 1920 or so. It was an amazing revelation to learn about all these different uh, high-ranking mafia people that he knew. Other mob bosses throughout the country as well, you know, whether it was from New York um, and, you know, Fat T Tony Salerno uh, to uh, Kansas City, Nick Savelli, to um, a gentleman in um, uh, Los Angeles as well. Um, they, you know, they, he had a lot of different people. Uh, uh, Owen Madden, uh, who was from the Cotton Club, had a uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas, had a casino and a hot spot, and he would always go there. Some of the movies, you know, show them in the light of being hatchet men. And uh, there were a couple guys, sure, you know, that just killed for the love of killing. But most of the guys, especially in Cleveland, were family men. You know, they didn't uh, go around just killing people. Um, people I've met during uh, presentations uh, have told me how wonderful my grandfather was towards them how friendly he was. One lady gave, showed, came to one of my presentations and brought a diamond ring that my grandfather gave her because she was a waitress at the Bluegrass. And she was getting hassled one time and my grandfather just went up to the guys and said, you know what, it's New Year's Eve, everybody wants to close and go home, you know, let's just go home. You know, and it, it, they, they held a lot of respect and a lot of admiration for so many people. They weren't looked at as murderers, they were looked at as a friend of the community. And, and that's the way Cleveland was ran by John Scalish and the Milanos. Cleveland State University, their archives division was outstanding. Uh, they had a tremendous amount of information from newspaper articles that I researched. Um, hundreds, probably three or four hundred different articles. And I used a lot of that information in the other two books that I've written, King of Clubs, as well as Gangland Cleveland style. Also from the Freedom of Information Act from the Department of Justice, I was able to get 1,800 pages of information from my grandfather and his friends. So, you know, some of the stories I, um, in Brancato Mafia Street Boss, I relate from my family, some of my older cousins that knew exactly who my grandfather was. Uh, they, you know, transpired some of the information as well that I related in the books.